this video, I'm gonna teach you how to tack up your horse with the Total Contact Saddle. So to first get started, we're just gonna brush her a little bit. You don't have to brush their whole body. You can just brush where the tack's gonna go. So the whole back and also the girth area. And if you're using a breast collar, you'll also wanna do their um, neck and chest area and even the side of the shoulder. We just don't want there to be any like dry caked on mud. We don't want there to be anything that could potentially like poke them, like any stickers. You're not gonna get all the dirt off. That's just not even possible. <laughs> but we just don't want anything like that that would be particularly uncomfortable or potentially cause a sore from rubbing. I'm gonna give her a nice uh, belly scratch while we're at it, except she's eating, so we can't really tell. <laughs> And if you're wondering, the tool I'm using is called Strip Hair Gentle Groomer. It's our favorite grooming tool. We have two videos about that actually, which I will leave in the description so you can check those out. It looks like this. It's really cool. It's um, all in one. It can replace all of your other grooming tools. So it's really cool. And it's also a good idea to pick out your horse's hooves before you ride them or do groundwork with them in case there is a rock in there that could potentially end up causing a bruise. Which she does not. Just some dirt in the middle. Okay, now we can get to actually tacking up. So first, I'm just gonna show you what you need. You need your total contact saddle, you need a girth, and you need a saddle pad. It's very simple. So before we get to each step, I'm gonna first show you how you will, how to know where to put the total contact saddle on your horse and where it should be. And I'm gonna do this without the pads so that you can see better. So on the horse's back, right here we've got the withers. And right behind the withers is the perfect spot for riding. It's the perfect spot for sitting, and it's the perfect spot for the total contact saddle. So your horse will, each horse is going to have basically a sweet spot for the saddle where it's going to want to sit, and it's going to sit the best. And you may not get it exactly there when you put it on, but as you're working with the horse, it's probably going to shift to that place anyway. But I'm going to put this on and show you where that, what that looks like without the pads. You can really see this clearly. You just want to sling it up gently so it's not banging on them. As you can see, right about there is going to be the spot for Star. So you can see it's partially on her withers and it's partially not. It's, and it's at an angle. It's just right, it's coming right, like if you look here, here's the base of her withers. So it's right over that and just slightly past it, slightly at the beginning of her wither. And that's a really good spot on her. So now we can see where that's at. We have that good visual example. Now, I'll get the pad and put the pad on first. Now, before I put the pad on, I'm just going to give it a quick check and brush off. Again, just like why we um, brush the horses back. We just don't want there to be something that's going to potentially irritate them and cause a uh, sore or a rub. And you can see there's some some dried on dirt and sweat, but it's coming off super easy with the strip hair because it's dry. That's another thing about the strip hair, it's great. It works really good for your saddle pads. She's interested in that. So now we can put the pad on. Now this particular pad has a, a patch, whatever you call that, for the withers. <laughs> That's how you know this goes at the front and goes over the withers. Not all pads have that, but and when I put a pad on, I want to start it up higher than it needs to be, and that way I'm going to slide it back to where it should be, and that's going in the direction of the hair. So that way I'm not mussing her hair up in the opposite direction, which wouldn't be very comfortable. So sliding it back means it's going to keep her hair going in the right direction. Okay. Pull out her mane here if there's mane that, that doesn't need to be under there. It's going to be a little bit sometimes, but pull out as much as you can. And now. Get the saddle and the girth and then grab that. So, again, when you put this on, just be gentle. Sling it up over gently. You don't want it to just bang on to them. 
I hold, see here, but I have the fenders. I, I kind of go, I hold up under here as I go over, so I'm holding it up and then I'm gently letting it down. So now with the pad on, it's a little bit more difficult to see where it is. It can take a little bit of trial and error of getting used to putting it on your horse. But I'm looking for it to just lay nice and even. And then right here is the TCS um, logo, right in the middle of the TCS. And that's a great gauge to make sure you've got this on your horse evenly. You want that right in the middle of their spine as close as you can so that it is straight. Okay, now we can take our girth. So this is the kind of girth that you're going to use with the Total Contact Saddle. It's an English girth. We have the long billet, so we have a short girth. If you go with the short billet TCS, you'll need a long girth. And you can move the fender out of the way. So we're going to start by just buckling up the girth on one side evenly on both buckles, both straps. It's even. Six. Yeah. Okay. And we're not looking to have this as tight as we're going to have it when we ride. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Okay. Now we're going to reach under and get the girth. But when you reach under get the girth, the safest way to do that is to face your horse's um, head. That way if the horse went to kick, they're not going to kick you in the head. Now, if you're, and if you're wearing a helmet, that's even safer. But it's better to just not have your head in that direction. So you can pet him a little bit and then reach under and grab it. I like to keep the girth up against the horse so that way it's just more comfortable for them than like down and up, down and up. Although I will say that's not a bad thing to have your horse be totally comfortable and used to. But just I just tend to hold it up to make it just comfortable for them. All right, so now this girth has this strap right here. So I stick the billet behind that and then through the buckle on both sides. Make sure we're getting the right slot. And that right there is not tight enough at all for riding. You can see how I can really pull on that. You definitely need to be snug with that for riding. But when I first tack them up, I'm not going to put it as tight as I need it for riding because I'm going to do some groundwork with her and then I'll be tightening it again. But I do want to make sure that it's snug enough that it's not going to come down her side. If I'm doing groundwork, I'm lunging her, and especially if they are really feeling good and they're like jumping around and a little bucking on the ground, you do not want the saddle to slip down. So you want to make sure it's snug enough that it's not going to come off but we're going to snug it more before we get on to ride. You really want to make sure you get your girth snug enough. You're better to be a little bit snugger than you need than to a little bit looser because if it's a little bit too loose, you run that risk of the saddle slipping, no matter what saddle it is, whether it's a TCS or a regular traditional saddle. If it's not tight enough, that's definitely a safety hazard of it potentially ending up down your horse's side and under their belly, which would be very dangerous for you and could be very dangerous for your horse as well. So you want to make sure it's snug enough. Okay, so there you go. That's how to tack up your horse. And now I'm gonna do some groundwork with her. And again, I'll be tightening that girth a little bit more before I get on. And also, just to mention with the girth, um, you want it to be even, ideally on both sides of the, um, like how many holes up from the bottom or down from the top, whichever one you want to do. So like right now I have it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the seventh hole, and ideally, you want it to be the same on both sides so that it's nice and even, the pressure's even. And depending on your horse, that might be something you can't do, but that's ideally. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you just got the TCS or you're just brand new to horses and tacking up, I hope you found it helpful. I'll leave links in the description for the TCS if you wanna check it out. This is totally new saddled you, it's really cool. It um, fits every horse, every shape and size, and you don't have to worry about a tree uh, impinging them or causing sores or anything like that, any kind of damage to their back. So I highly encourage you to check it out if you haven't, and I'll talk to you in my next video. Come on, sir.
All right, I finished tightening up the girth and if you come up here, you can see, I'll show you how, how even though I have it quite snug, I can still get my hand back here. I can still fit in here in here, and there's still space to pull on a little bit and that's good. You don't want to be, you know, so tight that they can't breathe. You just want it tight enough that it's going to stay on good. So I also wanted to mention and share with you that if you're new to our channel and you're new to us, my, my, my name's Rachel and my sister Sarah, she's behind the camera. Um, we are the two, <laughs> we're the two girls behind Equip Free Equines and our whole mission here is to help beginner horse owners who are naturally and self-sufficiently minded in, in your own lives and you want to do the same for your horses but you're not sure how to go about that and it's really frustrating trying to figure it all out on your own. And if, <laughs> if you're in the horse world, you probably know when you're naturally minded and you seek out um, help and guidance, a lot of times you come up against people who are just conventionally minded and rather derogatory and unsupportive of a natural approach, which can be really discouraging. And so we're here for you. We are here to show you, to equip you, empower you, and um, help you to be able to successfully take on the care and training of your horses yourselves in a way that's in alignment with your values of natural living and self-sufficiency. That is 100% how we are. And so we're here to help you in that so that you can have a wonderful, joyful, peaceful, rewarding experience with horses. Because horses are simple and it can be that way. It, they can be simple, they can be rewarding and fun, and they also don't have to be nearly as expensive as you may think. Because if you, if you look at the conventional side, um, oh my goodness, it can be so expensive. I don't even know how people do it. Like it does not have to be that expensive. We sum it up like this. Our approach is a simple, natural, affordable approach to horse ownership that is founded upon how horses are designed. So if that is um, in alignment with you, we would love to have you along on our YouTube channel and you can find us on Instagram as well. We'll leave links to that in the description. We'd love to have you subscribe, leave a comment and like and get to know you and help you guide and help you in your journey with horses. I now show you how I mount. You can actually mount from the ground in the TCS if you didn't know that. Um, you just, it can slip a little bit, but um, what I find that helps is staying in real close and just really trying to really bounce off the ground so you're not putting a lot of weight in the stirrups when you get on. You wanna make that minimal and that's gonna keep it in place better. I also like to just grab up here on their mane and I try to stay real close to them when I go up to swing so again I just keep everything good and in place so as you can see I mounted from the right side we always mount back and forth we mount right left um, when I was tacking her up I was doing most things from the left for this video but we always go back and forth left and right because you always want to make sure your horse is comfortable with um, anything on both sides of their bodies because if you don't practice it they won't be so quick tip for you in training horses oh and while we're at it I guess I'll mention to you as well when you get on your horse this is another way you can get a good idea of if your TCS is in the right place you want to be basically half on the TCS and half off of it and I am and overall you just want to feel comfortable like your your legs you don't want them to feel like they're way out in front of you or way behind you or anything like that you just want to feel balanced now that being said if you're brand new to the TCS that can take some time to get used to it took me a little time to get used to because um, I wasn't used to riding in it so keep that in mind if it, if it feels a bit awkward at first don't give up on it because you just have to get used to it so something we always do when we first get on our horses is flexing and that's what I'm doing right now and the reason for that is to make sure that they're being soft and supple, but also, like a bug must be bothered in there. Also, because we don't ever want our horses to immediately go to walk off when we get on, we want them to wait for us to give them the cue to go forward. And this is a great way to prevent them from doing that and teaching them that when we get on, it's not to immediately go off and get going. We want to we want to be relaxed. And the other reason is because flexing is super important for being able to do a one rein stop which is an, basically an emergency break, and everyone should know how to do this, everyone. It is so important. We got a mad peak because we got a horse fly on him. Oh, there's two. Okay, I'll show you one rein stop, just at a walk so you can see what I, what I mean by a one rein stop. So one rein stop, which in an emergency situation, I wouldn't be too worried about this, but what I do when I'm gonna do a one rein stop is I first, I, I sit down deep in my seat, she's not really paying attention, I give her a chance to stop with that and then I just pull her head around and I hold it up at my hip until she stops and softens and then I flex her to the other side but in an emergency situation I wouldn't really care about <laughs> sitting down first I would just be like okay let me try this I would just go I would just quickly immediately just really um, shut, the, shut them down and what it's doing is completely disengaging their body 
so they can't really do anything. They, they can't keep running, they can't keep um, rearing or bucking or anything like that. Now ideally your horses should not be rearing or bucking when you're riding them. If they are, you need to go back to the ground and get the foundation good because that is not good. It's a recipe for disaster, danger, danger. So we don't want that. But that's one run stop and highly encourage you to um, learn that. And if you want to know how you can learn it, get the Down Under Horsemanship Fundamentals Kit and you'll learn it all. And uh, you will be set up for a great rewarding experience with training horses. But that's kind of another topic for another video. And this video is kind of long anyway. So I think we're going to end it there. Happy trails! <laughs>